Hello, this is Nathan Wood, pastor of North Dayton Baptist Church, and welcome to day 20 of the McShane Reading Plan. Glad you could join us. It's been a while, and I uh, hope you've been keeping up with the reading. Uh, we are today, bear with me here, making the technology work. Genesis 21, Matthew 20, Nehemiah 10, and Acts 20. Genesis 21, Isaac is born. And it's important for us to remember that God counted the faith of Abraham for righteousness. Does that mean his, um, his good works saved him? No. By faith alone and Christ alone. And Christ is pre-incarnate here, but Christ is still very much the word of the Lord coming to Abraham. Rest assured, Christ has always existed. He always is. Um, so the salvation of Abraham is dependent upon the Savior yet to come, that shall come from his loins, the son of the promise, Jesus Christ, the son of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, David, the heir to the throne, and the one who is seated at the right hand of the Father. Praise God. Look at verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad, and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah hath said unto thee, hearken unto thy voice, for in Isaac shall thy seed be called. Abraham messed up. He messed up trying to get ahead of God with uh, Ishmael having a son by his bondwoman, uh, Sarah. And he had a bad idea. Sarah was hurt by it, even though she came up with it. Abraham was hurt by it. Isaac was hurt by it. The children of Israel are hurt by it. Heck, the children of Ishmael are hurt by it. But the seed of the promise is in Isaac. The seed of the promise. Laughter. And um, God, can, God can work through our mistakes, in spite of our mistakes, uh, with our mistakes, redeeming our mistakes, uh, overcoming our mistakes. We cannot thwart the will of God. Once he is promised, he is promised, and he is sure of that promise. Abraham also messed up bad <laughs> twice, um, not owning up to being Sarah's wife and almost getting her um, taken advantage of by the people with whom he sojourned. It's, um, it's a bad deal. He's shifty. Uh, his grandson, Jacob, follows in his footsteps. In fact, Isaac also follows in his footsteps. Um, they don't. Uh, they don't learn. They don't learn. Uh, Jacob doesn't commit the same thing Isaac does. Um, but uh, even Jacob is very shifty and crafty in how he deals with things. You say, is God glorifying this behavior? No. So why does why does Abraham continue to have the promise? Because God pays for the promise, ladies and gentlemen. Abraham didn't pay for the promise. God pays for the promise. You can make a mistake. You can have a bad day. You can have a bad five days. You can have a bad month. You can have a bad year. You can have a bad several years. You can have a bad decade. You can have a bad, by human standards, you can have a bad life. Ladies and gentlemen, Christ can redeem it. And even if things don't turn out well by human standards in your life, you can live a life of misery. But folks, if you know Jesus Christ, if you know Jesus Christ, you will have showers of blessing that transcend anything physical. The joy of the Lord in his gospel, the precious promise that he has, even though we may not realize it in this life, it is forever and it is sure. You can be assured of eternity in the kingdom when you trust in Jesus Christ. Abraham believed God and it was counted to him for righteousness. Not, well, Abraham, you better behave or else I'll, I might just have to renegotiate. No, God cut the covenant. God cut the covenant. And look here, verse 30 of Genesis 21. And he said, For these seven ewe lambs shalt thou take of my hand that they may be a witness unto me that I have digged this well. Abraham is dealing with Abimelech and at the well of Beersheba. 
Abraham dug the well, and then he pays for it. God created you. He created all of humankind, but yet he had to pay for you. It's yours. Sometimes you got to pay to. Sometimes you have to pay to use what's yours, and it isn't fair. But he's willing to do it. God is willing, was willing, and he already did pay for your eternal soul with the blood of Jesus Christ. God paid the penalty while we were yet sinners. Christ died for us. That's a precious, precious promise. Verse 15 in Matthew 20, talking about the man giving different wages, giving the same wage to everybody who worked in the vineyard, all those who answered the call to come and follow him. He says, is it not lawful for me to do what I will with mine own? Is I not evil? I evil because I am good? Folks, we look at somebody in the world's eyes like Abraham and we say, he's a scoundrel. Why does the Lord keep promises to him? I know a lot better people than him who don't believe in Jesus, but for some odd reason, they you say they go to hell? If you don't believe in Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, and hell's the wrong word, proper terms, lake of fire. Hell's an anglicized word. But yes, if you do not believe in Jesus Christ, there is no other salvation than salvation himself. That's what his name means, Jesus, Yeshua. Yes, it's exclusive. Truth by its very nature is exclusive. This shirt is red. If I could tell you it was green, but that would be a lie. That would be a lie. I could tell you that you can get to heaven without Jesus Christ, but that would be a lie. Might make me make you feel better right now, but it would do no good. It's like shooting pain medicine in, in a wound that isn't healed. It can only make things worse if it's used improperly. Folks, a false gospel is a false bomb for a very real hurt. And that hurt is unto death. Spiritual death. If you do not know Jesus, you have not been healed of the poison that is in you. You must believe God for righteousness. It's not about your good behavior. Um, there's going to be a lot of people that the world thought was pretty good that are going to eternal judgment. Not because they did the good things, but because they rejected the one who died for them. That is arrogance. There is going to be a lot of people that we consider reprehensible that trusted in Jesus as Savior and said, Lord, I have no other righteousness but you, but please save me. I need you. Just like the thief on the cross. And Jesus said to him, today you'll be with me in paradise. God judges by what he has done, by what he has paid, and who accepts his gift if you snub the Lord, you snub his salvation, you snub his eternal life. If you snub his righteousness and say, my righteousness is thank you, very good, thank you, I'll have none of yours, you play a losing game of chicken with eternity. Christ became a servant to show us that we need to humble ourselves before the Father. If God himself humbles himself as a sacrifice for us, we should humble ourselves before the suffering servant. <laughs> and I would be remiss if I didn't mention this. Um, this is a moment of humility for some of us pastors, but um, I have to laugh, I preached a very short sermon this past Sunday, but um, this, uh, I've been known to preach very long sermons, at least relatively speaking. Uh, some have preached longer than me, especially in history, um, 
verses 9 and 10 of Acts 20 uh, give the patron saint of uh, people who fall asleep in church, and that's Eutychus, um, who fell asleep and fell out of a window. And it was Paul who was preaching. So even the great apostle Paul um, can cause people to fall asleep in church. It's <laughs> It happens. Um, you can have uh, wonderful uh, children of God and servants of the Lord who will fall asleep in church. Um, people get tired. Uh, I get tired. I get very tired. Um, you go through times when you don't get as much sleep as you should, or you're stretched thin, or things are um, worrying you, or you got something on your mind, or somebody's sick, somebody's ill. Um, you try to work through something. You might fall through a window, but rest assured, God sees you. And um, it's just a word of caution to preachers, don't let it go too long. But um, anyway, I can't remember who wrote the book, Saving Eutychus. I'll have to look up. Uh, I haven't read it yet. I, I, I need to. I want to. But um, anyway, believe God for righteousness today. Don't trust in yourself. Don't trust in your good works. Don't say, oh, I've lived a pretty good life and I've gone to church and I've tithed and I shook the preacher's hand. And, yeah, I believe in the good Lord. Don't let it be that simple, folks. You must believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. You must believe in the God who came down and became man. Seed of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, David, heir to the throne, perfect sinless lamb of God, perfect Israelite who walked perfectly, talked perfectly, taught perfectly, and laid down his life as a sacrifice for us because he could, because only he could satisfy the wrath of Almighty God. That's not a boring sermon. That's the best news in the world. Trust in him today and forget. Ask God's forgiveness for the mistakes you've made and, and lay your burdens on God daily. Don't sweat them. Follow Jesus. Follow Jesus. Ask forgiveness. Follow Jesus. Lay your burden on him. Trust in him. We love you. Have a good day.